Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one must say. Let him lay me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me, I pray. Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one must say. Let him lay me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me, I pray. Let I be me instead of playing games For chasing fame, let somebody spread the lack of flames no Living my life to the fullest And shout out my halala to the fullest Let my lungs out I'm still rising up to greater highs As long as I'm Hello, Bonjour and Bonani. Welcome, welcome to Rise to Greater Heights Network, where you can turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. It is so significant, good people, to have a positive mindset, especially under these circumstances. So this network has the potential to completely revolutionize every aspect of your life and career. My name is Nompumelelo, and I'm going to be your host for today. So if you're watching online, please feel free to put in the chat box where you're watching us from and what you hope to achieve from our podcast. Today, we are surrounded by greatness in the world wide web. We have uh, amazing speakers who's going to share nuggets on human rights. In uh, New Jersey, we have uh, Yinka Olasoji. And uh, in Washington, D.C., we have Stephen Underwood. And we go down to Arkansas, we have uh, Dr. Onka Shelley. So at this moment, I will let our speakers to introduce themselves. So you can go ahead, um, Yinka. Okay, my name is uh, Yinka Olasoji. Uh, I'm an IATA certified travel consultant, uh, a U.S. IDHR certified human rights consultant, an international athlete, a coach of international repute. So it's a pleasure being on this great interactive uh, platform. Thanks. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen Underwood out of Washington, D.C., and uh, I am a uh, global international business coach. I'm certified in business consulting as well as human rights uh, consultant advocate, and I'm also certified as a uh, cultural intelligence uh, specialist uh, in emotional and in uh, emotional and in the intelligence space. And so um, I love the work that I do in helping people upgrade their mindset. And I loved your uh, opening presentation about, you know, uh, you know, dealing with your mindset, helping people get a different perspective on, uh, you know, on different things. And so I'm glad to be here with everyone. And I'm looking for, very forward to sharing, you know, a little bit of the knowledge that I've gleaned uh, from my uh, human rights education certification training. And uh, I'm, again, Stephen Underwood out of Washington, D.C., 
I'm a global, I'm a global international business uh, strategist coach. Thank you. And I pass it on to Dr. Anika Shirley. Amen. Such a pleasure to be here. My name is Dr. Onika Shirley. I'm here from West Helena, Arkansas, founder and CEO of Action Speaks Volume Incorporated. I am a international best-selling author, um, consultant, Christian counselor, also a human rights and business consultant. Um, such a pleasure to be here. Um, I do philanthropy work in um, Pakistan, India, and Africa. I'm super excited about being here and um, sharing the knowledge that I have gained about human rights and um, our responsibilities, and um, such a pleasure to be here. You're on mute. On mute, yeah. <laughs> I've been talking, talking, like going. <laughs> yeah, what I was saying is that we have a disclaimer as a, a Rise to Greater Heights Network. We are only here to provide information to the uh, information about human rights to the general public. So legal information is not the same as legal advice as to the application uh, as to the application of law to an individual specific circumstances. So we cannot offer any legal advice in response to specific questions. So we strongly recommend that you consult a lawyer if you need such help. So I'll come back to you, Yinka. If you happen, if you happen, I, may, I can see your billboard coming down there in the busy street of um, New Jersey. What will your billboard say? Ah, uh, well, first of all, if I'm gonna have a billboard, it's not going to be just one billboard. <laughs> it's going to be a whole lot of billboards. <laughs> I just have to like, you know, be selective. My billboard is just going to be centered on education. And why? Because education remains the pathway, you know, to sustainable human rights. So mm -hmm. without that, we cannot actually, have, I mean, attain uh, a greater height in sustaining the human rights globally. So education remains a very vital tool in making yeah. human rights uh, you know, possible. I love that, yeah, so I love it, that. Yeah. How about you? How about you, Stephen? I can see your billboard coming down. The easy highway of Washington, D.C. What will your billboard say? Uh, my billboard would say, enhancing intelligence and uh, to create a more better equitable world. And uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Yinka that uh, everything starts with education. Um, fundamentally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I concur with him, as he said, uh, with ev the education is the foundation for everything. And in, uh, in, in collaboration with Dr. Claude Alexander, out of uh, the DMV area, he says the same thing. There are five foundations, but the main foundation that must be laid is education-wise. Because exactly. where, the, where, the mind is, where the mind is not educated, everything else will be, everything else will be excavated. I want to say that again, where the mind is not educated, everything else will be excavated or extracted from a people, from a society, from a culture. And so that's what my billboard would say, enhancing the intelligence to create a more equitable world for everyone involved. Oh, wow. Wow. I love that. I love that. Uh, how about you, Dr. Shelley? I can see your billboard. Maybe it's already there. I don't know. What will your billboard say? Well, my billboard would say that I help you build unshakable confidence, stop procrastinating, and to get your dreams out of your head into your life, because your life matters. Oh, wow. 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 You know, I think my billboard can be the fourth one. If you're driving down the highway, Yink, uh, uh, Stephen, and Dr. Shelley, so mine will be the fourth one. You may never know. <laughs> So Yinka, Yinka is going to be the first speaker for today. Yinka Olasoji is a certified human rights consultant. He's also an IATA certified travel consultant. Yinka is also a professional athlete and a coach of an international repute. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome Yinka Olasoji. Uh, once again, it's a great pleasure to be on this uh, interactive uh, session whereby we have to come together, brainstorm and provide solutions to human rights advocacy. 
So today I'm going to be talking on uh, Human Rights Articles uh, 1 to 5 of the UNDHR of uh, 1948. Uh, first of all, before I go on with uh, all these articles, uh, I want to like shed more light on uh, human rights. What is human right? We all know that. But for the benefit of our viewers out there, I would like to say one or two things about human rights. Human rights are fundamental basic rights. We all are born to enjoy as a human being. We are not we are born with it naturally. It's not as it's not something that was I mean that is being given to us as an individual. It's totally different from uh, civil rights. Miranda rights and every other right. So they are, they, are, they are basic fundamental right that we are born with as an individual to enjoy. Uh, I'll be talking first on Article 1 of the UN DHR uh, Human Rights Article, which says we all are born free and equal. Of course, we all are born free and equal. Uh, but in the real sense, are we really born free and equal? That's just a rhetorical question here. Uh, we are born free and equal to enjoy some uh, to enjoy our human rights. It is not something that was that is being given to us by the society. It's different from civil rights. Like I said earlier on, totally different. We are born to enjoy it as long as we're still existing as a human being. So we all are equal, we are born free and equal. That's Article 1. Um, article 2, which says uh, freedom from discrimination. Freedom from discrimination of all sorts, irrespective of our color, our background, our religions, our belief, our affiliation, and every other thing. We are uh, 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 we, are, we all have access to to this. Uh, I mean, to this right, freedom from discrimination of any sort. That's uh, Article Two. Then Article Three, we talks about right to life in freedom and not in anarchy of any sort and to enjoy life in safety. Yeah, that's on Article 3 and Article 4, which says freedom from slavery. Uh, although there is abolition of slave trade, but uh, today well, we still have uh, some, uh, some sort of uh, what, what we call the uh, uh, modern day slavery. You know, whereby people will like some organizations and some king thing will like, you know, uh, come together and start exploiting human beings for selfish and inordinate ambition, you know, for prostitution, you know, for human trafficking and all that still existing today. And these are the things we are talking about under the Article uh, 4 that. Uh, Freedom from torture of any kind, be it from kidnapping, uh, arrest. We have series of cases where by protesters, uh, peaceful protesters, we gather together to express their opinion, you know, and they will be like arrested, tortured, and at, at times killed. It happens globally everywhere, you know. Uh, this is unacceptable according to the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. Uh, so these are the things I'm going to be talking about. Uh, 
so that will be all. Well. I'm not too sure if you are done, Yinka. Are you done with your presentation or you were just giving highlights? Oh, I think we've lost. We've lost Yinka. Yeah, looks, hello. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm not too sure. Are you done with your presentation or you're just giving highlights? Yeah, I'm just giving some highlights. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, can I go on? I will see you on. Okay, so uh, basically, Article 1, which talks about being born free and equal. As a human being, we are born naturally free, irrespective of uh, the color, uh, especially the color, you know, people will say, oh, because you're black or white or whatever, then you might not have access to this. It shouldn't be so. In this modern world, we tend to like, you know, we, we tend to be, we tend to stop, we are supposed to be living in peace and harmony, in dignity, respecting each other's uh, background, religion, you know, uh, 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 and color. We shouldn't say, oh, because it's black or white or whatever, then, it's not supposed to be here or whatever. So these are the things that is being enshrined. The, 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 the Article 1 and 2 sets the tone for the entire declaration of the whole human rights articles. Why? Because they talk about dignity, and safeguarding of the of, of human rights as a whole. That's uh, on Article One. Then freedom from discrimination. Discrimination can come from any sort of angle. You know, we've heard of uh, cases of people who fought fervently in uh, safeguarding human rights. The likes of uh, a, a particular South African judge, George uh, Abu uh, Sachs who fought fervently in ensuring that uh, a particular air hostess uh, with uh, something like an HIV uh, status was not discriminated, you know, by the, I mean, from, I mean, uh, by the South African Airways, simply because it was, I mean, an HIV uh, person, person living with HIV uh, status, you know. Uh, the judge himself, this was, wasn't uh, an HIV uh, a person living with an HIV, but he fought for something job globally accepted till today. That people should always respect each other, regardless of what they are, they are, they are going through, I mean, where they are coming from, or their status, their religious, their creed, or whatever. Uh, so that's what we're talking about here under the freedom from discrimination. Then the, the, the right to life, the right to life, we all, we all need to live in peace and not in anarchy. Peace and not in anarchy. Today, a lot of things are going wrong, whereby we have people cannot actually get out to protest, express their opinion, you know, basically because they are seen as a, like a target or something like that, which is not supposed to be so. We are supposed to respect each other's opinion for us to live in peace and harmony, you know. So this, 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 what I'm going to be talking about on uh, the right to life, to live in peace and harmony, then freedom from slavery. Also, people shouldn't live a life of a slave whereby you are being enslaved mentally, uh, 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 physically, you know, subjected to hard labor, prostitution, and all that. 
it shouldn't be so in this modern generation we have because we are clamoring for peace, we are clamoring for harmony, you know, uh, in the entire world. So we should do our best as an educator to enlighten people on this issue because majority of people uh, globally does not even, I keep saying one thing that you can never teach what you don't know. Likewise, what you don't know can you can not actually benefit from it. That's one thing. That's why I say that education remains the pathway to sustainable human rights. So for us to like move forward on these, uh, in actualize, actualizing this dream, we should be able to like educate people out there so that they're not going to fall victims into all these things. Then freedom from torture, like I say, uh, 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 still still exists today, whereby people will be you know, illegally, unlawfully arrested, subjected to torture, out of you know, mass inordinate ambition and all that, trying to like exhibit power and authority you know, in some kind of manner. These are not supposed to be, and we keep on enlightening people out there so that they can actually know what is right from what is wrong. So I think I'm done with my presentation for now. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thank you so much, Inka, for delivering such a much-needed, timely message. Really, oh, really no that's, that's all what we need, we need to know our human rights. That means we are, we are born into this world. It doesn't matter who we are born or what kind of family we are born into. We all have the internal recognition of moral quality of one's motives and actions. So thank you, my brother, for sharing such a timely and needed message. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome. So our next speaker gonna be Mr. Stephen Underwood. Stephen Underwood is a thought change agent as a global cross-cultural intelligence leadership strategies. He is here to help people in the global cultural marketplace. He possesses over 30 years in global leadership and creative one-to-one -one lifestyle brand marketing too. He is a global international child born and raised with speaking several different languages. His aim is to educate, examine, equip, and empower citizens and organizations in the global economy by becoming better global citizens and organizations within the arena of the global cultural environment. Stephen and Misty are the GEO GPM and founders of their own global Global Cross Cultural Intelligence Leadership Strategies, such a business in Washington, D.C. Stephen's skill set and capabilities range across a vast variety of uh, disciplines as a business leader. Stephen is also a, is changing the world through global cultural, global cross cultural intelligence business leadership, strategic development, and mentorship programs through entrepreneurial endeavors by creating and building our own socio -eco ecosystem sustainable based economies through promotional partnerships and internal lifestyle one-to-one -one brand marketing systems. He, he's doing this to help live better, healthier lifestyles within the global marketplace. So kings and queens, please join me and welcome Devin Underwood. Hello, greetings Echo. everyone. Uh, so, glad, so good to uh, be here with the host. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rio and also Yinka and Dr. Shirley. It's good to be here with everyone. And I'm glad to be here with uh, all the, everything of what uh, what the hostess has said uh, in short, uh, I am just a global executive peacemaking officer. And I want to emphasize peacemaking because there's a difference between peacekeeping and peacemaking. Peacekeeping is, you know, uh, being 
being um, doing things out of the out of necessity of applying band aids, you know, putting putting the uh, putting the uh, 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 tourniquet on things that have been that have been plaguing our society and our cultures and our, our ethnicities, our languages, our people groups for, for centuries and years. And so what I do is I simply address things that are unconsciously biased to people and I help bring them to the forefront of consciousness so that we can live better, healthier lives within the global context of our world that we live in today. And uh, nothing has proven that more uh, efficacily than that of the of what we have been faced with with this with and through this pandemic. This pandemic has touched every part of life, whether in business, whether uh, your faith, whether your religion, whether you believe in something or you do not. What it has done is it has forced us as a people to have to look at ourselves. And to see where it is that we stand in our world, in the context as a human being. And I would just like to start off my uh, presentation uh, with the quote by Dr. Martin Luther King. He said, he said, the ultimate measure of a man or woman is not where they stand in the time of convenience and comfort. The ultimate measure of a man or woman is where they stand in the time of controversy and challenge. And this is what this is. This is what this pandemic has caused us to do as as a, a global family. It has caused us to have to look at ourselves and to find out whether we are going to be inhumane or whether we're going to be human beings. I want to say that again. It has forced us to look at ourselves on whether we're going to be inhumane or human being. Notice in both of these words, we have the word hue man. Hue, as we all know, hue means color, and man means derivative of not only just context of gender, but all of this stuff that we're dealing with in our world today, it has nothing to do with gender. It has to do with the man, the mankind of humanity, both male, female, child alike. And what I found is that we have we have been offending one another when we have when we have not the right to do so. So again. As I uh, piggybacking off of my brother, uh, Mr. Yinka, he hit, he hit the hammer on the head of the nail. Our, our lives are hinged on how we are educated. And one of the things that I feel that we have done to this society and, this, and th to these young people of today is that we have robbed them of true education. And I say that because before I even got into a classroom with a teacher telling me this and that, my education started in the home. Uh, my education started with my mother and my father, irregardless of whether you was born in a two parent family household or whether you were born and raised uh, by a single mother. Education started in the home. So we need to get back to that. And uh, so I, I concur with my brother, uh, uh, Mr. Yinka, in him saying that education is the foundation. Again, wherever, where education is not being truly developed, you can rest assured that people group, that person, that individual, they will be extracted. What I mean by extracted, they will be robbed. And I, I hate to use this term, but it, you know, it, it, it is proven. Wherever there's a nation that has not been properly educated, and uh, I believe one of the founding fathers said this, who wrote the uh, Declaration of Independence and the, uh, the Constitution. He said, wherever people are not properly educated, you, and I'm putting it harshly, and I believe that we need to be shocked in our day and time. Wherever, and these are in my own words, not in the founding father who wrote this or said this. I'm paraphrasing what he said, but it makes the point. Wherever people are not properly educated, they stand to be raped, pillaged, and plundered. And so with that, I'm going to get into the, the, five, the four uh, nestled things that I'm going to be talking about that stems and that flows out of what Mr. Yinka I'm going to be dealing with, uh, my articles are dealing with 11 through 15. 11 is, we're, all, we're always innocent till proven guilty. And then 12 flows into the right to privacy. And then 13 is freedom to move. 14 is the right to seek a safe place to live. And then the right to nationality. 
all these are harmoniously and congenial put together to help us understand what is our basic fundamental right, not your civil, not your political. Not even, not even your, uh, not even your classification of where you, where you stand as Democrat or Republican. Again, before you came into the world of of knowing any about any of that stuff, you were first a human being first. You know, I find it advantageously uh, bewildering to me is that how people, how people can uh, uh, want to stand for this and want to stand for that, but they don't know their basic fundamental right as a person. And, and when I went through this training, it opened, it further opened up my eyes. And this is what I love. And I, I'm so appreciative of how I grew up internationally because everywhere I live, I had to, I had to learn not only the people group that I was going to where I was going to live, but I had to learn who they were as a people. And this is one thing that we have gotten away from. You know, many of us, we don't even know our neighbors. But yet, but yet we have a voice for this and we have a voice for that when we don't even have a voice to properly and, and uh, 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 respectfully deal with one another and we live next to each other. That is, that is an oxymoron. So what we're trying to do, again, we're not trying to give any law advice. We're just sharing information to help, again, to help enhance your intelligences so that we all can live in an equitable world. And I would like to say a quote, I would like to say another quote by a gentleman that opened my eyes to the reality of the fact of the type of world that we're living in. And uh, he said this, the gentleman that said this, he was, a, he was a great economist. He said, a society that puts equality before freedom will get neither. A society that puts freedom before equality will get a high degree of both. Again, I want to say, I want to read that again. A society that puts equality before the freedom will get neither. A society that puts freedom before equality will get, get a high degree of both. And that was by the great economist Milton Friedman. And he's so right. And we look at our, we look at our culture, we look at our society today. We have that going on right before our very eyes, where people, where a certain people have wanted the right. This is my rights. These are my rights. But no, our rights as human beings are to dwell, as the Constitution said, to dwell you know, in unity of harmony and the pursuit of happiness. Sorry. Now, how am I gonna be happy when you're not happy? And then how am I gonna enjoy my happiness and I know I'm causing you discomfort and I'm causing you pain? That makes no sense. And so the first one I wanna deal with is we're always innocent till proven guilty. And my brothers and sisters that are people of color, they, they know this statement more, more uh, well and more better than any other people group because there's, you know, there's nothing more nerve wracking when you go into a department store, you go into a, 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 you know, you go into a high pollutant restaurant and then to have those that own the restaurant to look at you and to say, to say to you, you know, in their mind, and you can see almost like a billboard across their forehead, you know, is this person coming to rob me? or they're coming to do me some harm because of the color of your skin. And that, again, picking backing off of what Mr. Yinka said, we don't have a right to do that. But we do that because we do not know and we do not understand our basic fundamental human rights. And so we're, we're, we're always proven innocent to prove again. And so nobody should be blamed for doing something until it's proven. And when people say uh, we did a bad thing, we have the right to show it it is not true. And again, this is oftentimes, this is totally thrown out the window, is dis, uh, discarded. When you will find yourself in a, uh, and, I, and it's amazing that these four uh, elements fell on me, and this is the one that I'm dealing with today, is because I had something like this happen to me back in 1995. Me and my wife just newly married, and I had a situation that arose, and it caused me to be standing before a judge, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, and I mean, never been in trouble with the law ever in my life, both internationally or uh, nationally. And so to find myself in this situation and then to come across this training, it helped me appreciate even a greater detail that, listen, we're all proven innocent until proven guilty. And if you, if you feel that you are innocent, you have every right 
under the law where you live to prove that fact that it's not true. And so going into going into 12, the right to privacy. Now, this is this is also, uh, uh, you know, this fits into our day and time because it deals with nobody should be uh, nobody should try to uh, harm or our good name. Nobody has the right to come into our home or open up our letters, bother us or our family without good reason. And again, this pandemic has taught us about our I mean, about our own humanity in, in our lives. And so, you know, and dealing with uh, dealing with the things that we're faced with today as it deals with this pandemic. And we have a lot of people, you know, and this is just a, a observation. You know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, by them coming to you and asking, oh, have you been vaccinated? You're breaking the law. You know, you're going against HIPAA. You're going against HIPAA. Uh, I'm talking about here in the, uh, America. You're going against HIPAA and, and, and violating people's human rights. And not only their civil rights and their political rights, but you're, be you're basically violating their basic human fundamental rights as a human being. Because that's just between them and their doctor. And if you're not their doctor, you know, you shouldn't be harassing and you shouldn't be, uh, again, causing discrimination against people. And again, we, we don't know these things, as Mr. Yinka said, is because we do not understand our basic fundamental human rights. And so 13, freedom to move. We all have the right to go where we want to in our own country and to travel as we, as we wish or as we please. So that means nobody has the right to confine you to a particular place or under particular uh, uh, circumstances if it's, you know, if it's not a detriment to you or to the uh, populace at large. You have the right to go where you, where you desire and where you wish to go. And that is your basic fundamental human right to move wherever it is you please. You know, you might not feel safe in the neighborhood that you live in. You have the human basic fundamental right to seek out a place of safety, like Dr. Uh, Mr. Yinka said. And so, and then 14, the right to seek a safe place to live. If we are, if we're frightened of being badly treated in our own country, we all have the right to run away to another country to be safe. And how many people ever knew that? I mean, you know, and even out of all the travels that I've, I've been in in my life, I did not know this. You know, if you don't feel safe and you don't feel, uh, uh, you know, uh, like you're being treated properly in your country, you have the right under human rights to basically seek out that freedom and that safety and from discrimination and also the right to seek a safe place to live. Because the basic fundamentals of life is shelter and food. And so for you to be denied those basic fundamental rights, that is going against your human rights, not your civil, not your political, your human rights. And so 15 is my last one, the right to, to a nationality. We all have the right to belong to a country. And so this speaks to, you know, although I was born and raised and reared up in Torrejon de Autos, Madrid, Spain, but yet out of that, and because I possess dual citizenship, the place that i found to, for me to be safe or for me to uh, find a place of safety and a place of, you know, non-discrimination was America. But slowly but surely, you can see some of that, that in America of the landscape is vastly changing. And again, I want to close with Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, quote that he said back in 1968, the ultimate measure of a man or woman is not where they stand in time of convenience and comfort. The ultimate measure of a man or woman is where they stand in the time of controversy and challenge. And so we're, we're, ba we're basically facing controversial and challenging times. And I pray and I hope that we are all as human beings, no matter despite our language, our ethnicity, our people group, that we will arise and we will be the people that we're called to be. And that is the human family of God's creation. Thank you for this time. And I submit the floor back to to you, uh, real hostess, and then we thank you and appreciate you. That's my presentation. Oh, Stephen, Stephen, thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, for sharing such a much needed message, really. We have um, a right to travel. We have a right for your nationality. If you look at the world these days, really, how many people out there are stateless? 
tons and tons of people, they don't have any nationality. And uh, many, many people, they, uh, you will find that they've been living in that country for more than five years, but still they're stateless. So I believe that our audience have been, um, have been moved really with your message. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing such imaginative message. Yes, you're welcome. So our next speaker, our next speaker is going to be Dr. Onika Shirley. Dr. Onika Shirley is the founder and CEO of Actions Speaks Volume Inc. She's an international procrastination strategist and a behavior change expert. She's well known for building unshakable confidence, stopping procrastination, and getting your dreams out of your head into your life. She's a motivational speaker and a Christian counselor. Dr. Shelley is the founder and director of Actions Speaks Volume of an Age Home in India, founder and director of Actions Speak Volume Sewing School in uh, Pakistan, founder of Empowering Eight Inner Circles and AS Vickers. She's also a human rights advocate. She has been blessed to have coaching clients all the way in Namibia, in beautiful Africa. She is a 14 times selling author, master storyteller, and a serial entrepreneur. She is a biological mother, adoptive mother, foster mother, and a proud grandmother to baby Aubrey and baby Candelin. Of all the things she do, She's most proud of her profound faith in Christ and her opportunity to serve the body of Christ globally. She has globally impacted the lives of many around the world and her sincere passion is to get stuff done is the result of her being involved in two major car wrecks at the age of 19 where she went from working to SSI to earning well over six figures. She helped coaches and entrepreneurs overcome self-doubt and uncertainty to unlock a higher level of performance so they can scale their business to $10,000 a month without feeling overwhelmed. So kings and queens, um, I know I'm in Letak, but help me and welcome Dr. Shirley in the podium. Amen. It's such a blessing to be here. Thank you so much, Rio, for that introduction. And um, thank you so much, uh, Brother Stephen and Brother Yinka, for um, the information that you have shared with us on today. Um, today, I will be sharing articles 25 through 30. And I just want to piggyback on what has already been said, that when we are pr not properly educated, I feel like we are stagnated. We are stuck. We are not able to advance. We are not able to go to the next level. We're not able to, you know, live out our full potentials because we do not know really what is possible. So um, platforms like these and the things that we are sharing here on today is vital because I think a lack of awareness it's also a reason to keep us behind as a people. Um, and we know that we have our human rights. And I want to start off by um, with Article 25, talking about the right to adequate living standards. We know that, you know, um, having the, the, the right to um, housing and food and shelter, um, having just that standard living, nothing, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but something where we're able to sustain the house in which we have been given. When we're able to sustain our mental health, when we're able to sustain our physical health, when we're able to sustain our spiritual health, then we're able to be a contribution to others in the world when we have what we need. But when we're hungry, when we're homeless, when we're uneducated, we're not able to help others until we're able to help ourselves. And so we have the right as humans to be, to have adequate living standards. 
for us to be healthy, for our well-beings to be taken care of so that we are able to, you know, not only help ourselves, our families, our communities, our cities, our states, our countries, but our fellow brothers and sisters around the globe, you know, where we're able to get out of our backyards, where we're able to share the gifts that God has given us because of who we are, not what we have been given, not what we have obtained through education and institutions, but what we were given as a birthright as being a human being. The next article that I want to touch on is Article 26, that we all have the right to education. And I think that education is key. It's not what we know, but it's what we do with what we know. And it's not with what we don't know. A lot of times you've heard the saying that we say that what we don't know won't hurt us, but what we don't know can, will, and have hurted us. It has hurted us financially. It has hurted us spiritually. Not knowing has hurted us physically. Not knowing has kept us stagnated because we do not know. We did not know that we had 30 human rights. We did not know that we should be, that we have the right to education. We did not know that we had the right to adequate living. We did not know that we had the right for food and shelter. And so we have the right to education. We have the right to education and education shall be free. Now, I know when we get to doctorate degrees and master degrees and bachelor's degrees, but basic education should be free and it should be free to everyone. And when we think about everyone, what, who and what does everyone exclude? And we have to say absolutely nothing. Doesn't matter the color of our skin. It doesn't matter the neighborhoods we were raised in. Doesn't matter the family that we came from. We are all entitled to an education. Article 27, it talks about the right to participate in the cultural life of the community. We have a right we have the right to freely enjoy the arts of our community, to share in the scientific advancement and its benefits. We have a right as a human to be a part of that, not to be shunned, not to be pushed to the side, not to be muted, but we have the right to enjoy the arts of our communities and surrounding areas and to, to enjoy the benefits of its existence. Um, Article 28, we have the right to a social order that articulates this document. So everyone is entitled to a social and international order in which the rights and freedom set forth in this declaration can be fully realized. And that's why I think it is important for human rights consultants and advocates for us to be out, not just, you know, um, and, and out now is, on social media, out now is being across the globe, being where our feet may never trod, but where our voices can be, whether it be in writing, where, whether it be verbal, where we're able to communicate to individuals, where we're able to get into places that we may never physically see, but to let people know that you have a right to the things that we're talking about here. And then Article 29, that we have a right to community, uh, community duties essential to free and full development. Everyone has duties to the community in which alone the free and full development of his personality is possible. Where your personality is possible in the exercise of his rights and freedoms, everyone should be, should be subject only to such limitations as determined by the law. But we have the right to exercise what we have been given as human beings. And then article number 30 is the freedom for, uh, the freedom from state and personal interference in all of the above rights. Um, that nothing in this declaration may be interpreted as implying for any state group or person any right to engage in any activity or to perform in any activity aimed at the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms set forth herein. We have rights. You know, we, we talk about Black Lives Matter, but I want you to know that your life matter. 
Your life matter. Your life matter. The things that are concerning you matters. Your education matter. Your freedom matters. Your choices matter. What I like about being a believer, what I like about knowing that I'm a child of God. And when I speak about building unshakable confidence, it's not to be arrogant. It's not to be, uh, it's not to be cocky, but it's for you to know who you are in Christ the birthrights that you were born in, to know that you were born into the royal family and there are rights that comes to that just because of who you are. Not so much of the higher education, not because of the location, not because of the proximity, not because of what you've been given or not given, but just because of who you are. And so as I, as I, I wrap this up, we have rights because of who we are as sons and daughters of the most high king. Nobody have the right to take those rights away from us. Nobody has the right to, 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 to deny us of what the creator of the whole entire world has given to us. One scripture that I like is Matthew 6 and 33. It said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto us. All of your rights should be added unto you just because of who you are. God bless you. Dr. Shelley, Dr. Shelley, oh my goodness, you've just drawn, dropped a big bomb in front of every one of us, in front of every one of us. Thank you so much. For sharing this message, the much needed message of all seasons, it's much needed. And I believe that our audience out there have been motivated by every word that you've shared today. We have a right, we have a, we, we, we have a, a duty as a human being that we, we should carry in this world. So thank you so much, Dr. Shelley, for sharing such a much needed message. So I am, um, yeah, to our viewers online, please, all the speakers have already shared the nuggets that you needed today on human rights. So if you have any questions to any of the speakers today, just drop in the chat box and then we'll attend to your questions at the podcast. So I'm going to be the next speaker, but uh, before I speak, I'm just going to share my bio and then I will come back and speak. <laughs> Nan Pumalelo Rial Kunene is a highly sought after energetic certified Les Brown international speaker. She is the author and host to Rise to Greater Heights, a book and YouTube channel to turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. Rial is also a coach, mentor, and an MC, well known for encouraging many to rise from mediocrity into greatness. Her vision is not only to motivate, but also to empower audiences with a fresh perspective, inspiration they require to pursue success and drive sustainable outcomes in a seriously funny way. Rial believes that we are in full control of our choices. Her mission is to meet the needs and transform lives of her clients and her audience. Rial's book, Rise to Greater Heights, has inspired and empowered many to pursue their personal and professional passion to become go-getters. Her goal is to study your current situation, identify limiting beliefs, then design a plan of inspired action to empower you to achieve specific outcomes in your life. Rial Kunene wears many hats as a professional certified sales manager, CEO, strategist, certified travel counselor, trainer, esthetician, philanthropist, diplomacy protocol officer, yeah international human rights analyst and a commissioner for OS. Following her dreams gave her purpose to see her goals through and understand that she does have everything she needs to reach her full potential. Her everyday message is that your journey to be a better person starts with you. So knowing who you are to your core will make you understand that you are the only one who can accomplish your dreams. Hebrews 11, Psalm 27 and 40. Keep her to rise to greater heights. Kings and queens, please join me. Welcome, Rial Kunene! Thank 
thank you thank you so so much but before i continue i just want to double check if i'm in the right platform here how many of you have dreams and goals that you want to achieve maybe in the next six months i want you as you think about your dreams and goals to put this down rise to greater heights rise to greater heights because you need to be clear about your career goals to gain guidance on professional development. You really don't have to be politically involved to know about your human rights. All human beings are entitled to them. And you can never, ever be excluded from your own human rights. These are God-given fundamental rights and freedoms that you should, you deserve. You are born with it and you will die with it. As flight attendants always say that put on your oxygen mask first before you assist others, because if you don't, you and the other person you're trying to help could possibly go down. So I believe that today it's your time to gain knowledge. All these amazing speakers have shed some nuggets on human rights. So gain knowledge and go out there and make a difference to the world. And many of you may be asking, really, I've had all the speakers talking about human rights. What are human rights, really? Because I don't have that confidence to go out there and uh, start talking about human rights because I am not clear on what human rights are. What if I, I throw this question to you as, as uh, our audience, as you're watching online, what are human rights? What comes into your mind when you think of human rights? Just put in the chat box, what do you think of human rights? And then I'll come and check your, your, your responses to this question because human rights really, these are fundamental rights and freedoms that are inherent to all human beings, regardless of your gender, like uh, Yinka mentioned, gender, nationality, place of residence, sex, ethnicity, religion, and even your skin color. Human rights are not just about the law. So meaning that all human beings are entitled to them. Human rights are not just about the law, so they are non-discriminatory. Everyone is entitled to these human rights. It's not like the government is giving you these rights. You were born with these rights. And you really don't have to see the whole staircase in life, but you have to take the first step to get to the top. As my mentor always say that, you don't have to be great to get started, but get started to become great in life. So get started today. Seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless and plead the widow's cause. Really to me, it was the death of George Floyd that made me, uh, that made me realize that, you know what? We need to stand for a world where no one shall live in fear because of the color of their skin and where the criminal justice system treats everyone fairly and equally. If you remember very well, last year, May 25th, George Floyd, he died in police custody in Minneapolis, Minnesota. This 46 year old black man was arrested and killed after a convenience store employee called 911 on Floyd's suspicion of passing a counterfeit $20 bill. The video that was captured by a bystander, it shows George, Flo George Floyd peeing face down on the ground and in handcuffs as he was pleading for help when one of the police officers was just pressing his knee against his neck. He said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And finally, he fell silent. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Good people, it is so impossible not to be outraged watching that video of the Minneapolis officer pressing his knee against Floyd's neck for a period initially reported to be eight minutes and 46 seconds. I believe that everyone is born free and has the right to lie. So no one should ever be subject to such unjustified violence. Hence, I am here to educate everyone to know their human rights. All the speakers have shared that have taken their time off just to share the knowledge, spread the wisdom so that you know your human rights. Try by all means to be familiar with your human rights and go out there and be the change in this world. The change that you want to see must first begin with you. So it's so funny how my mom and dad gave me this beautiful, beautiful name, Nompomelelo. Nompomelelo in my own language, it means mother of all success. So now you can see that I am really, really challenged to chase after success, no matter what comes my way. No matter, like I'm not gonna be the kind of person who accepts to, to be defeated, I'll have to try and chase after success. Remember good people that a right is a freedom of some, of some kind. It doesn't matter where we were born or what kind of family we were born into. 
we are all give, uh, uh, we are all born into this world and should be given the same opportunities. We all have the internal recognition of the moral quality of one's motives and actions. You know, good people, I so wish you can tell yourself that, you know what, all the speakers have shared all the information about human rights. I'll have to go out there and make a difference. I'll have to go out there to be the change in my community. I'll have to go out there and make a difference to those who look at me as an inspiration. But in order for you to go out there and make a difference and be the change, you've got to be hungry. You've got to be hungry like the hungry lion in the jungle. That hungry lion in the jungle, really, it doesn't matter what kind of animal comes this way. It doesn't matter if you're the giant elephant or that small squirrel by the jungle. All that hungry lion sees in front of his face is lunch. Lunch. And it's so funny because even with elephants, when they see a lion, what they do is that they run. It's all about the mindset. Once you believe, you become. They already told themselves that, you know what? I am a lunch to that lion. So each and every time when I see a lion, I'll have to run. So I believe that's the mindset that we need really to be the change in our communities. Because I believe that we all rise together and we rise by lifting each other up. The article I'm gonna be uh, uh, going uh, diving deeper into today, really it speaks to my heart and more especially what's happening in, in my country right now, Swaziland, where I was born and raised. I'm gonna be speaking about Article 21, the right to democracy. Uh, Article 21 states that everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country directly or through freely chosen representatives. Everyone has the right of equal access to public service in his country. The will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of the government. This will shall be expressed in periodic and genuine elections which shall be by universal and equal suffrage and shall be held by secret vote or by equivalent free voting procedures. So you can see in these three concise, concise paragraphs, this article in making core elements of democracy a fundamental human right, it outlines that the will of the people should be the basis of government authority and everyone has the right to take part in the government. You know, although the article, it clearly refers to the principle of democracy by mentioning concepts such as elections and representation, but the actual fact in this world is way too far from what we are, we are learning from uh, this declaration. It's way too far from the ideals envisioned in this declaration. You know, towards the end of June this year, pro-democracy protesters in Swaziland and now, now the, the name of the country is Eswatini. It have sporadically taken the streets to express their displeasure with the, with the rule of the king, King Swatini that, and to call the political reforms. And most of the youth are calling the right to a democratical chosen prime minister. But what happened is that the king, he responded by suppressing political dissent through the state sanctioned violence. And law enforcement and the army, they reacted to these demonstrations by deploying stun grenades and firing live bullets leading to, protest that, to, pro to protesters retaliating by throwing stones to them. And more than 75 people have died so far and over 150 protesters have been hospitalized with injuries resulting from the live um, ammunition of beating but of being beaten by the, the security forces. So you can really see how much of violation the right to democracy has been in Swaziland. As thousands of, of people, they try to deliver petitions to constitutional authorities who are demo democratically appointed in a devolved system, but the government stopped them. They stopped these petitions being delivered, raising controversy from the National Teachers Union and leading to further civil, civil unrest. While the demonstration is still continuing in Swaziland uh, with the police trying to repel the protesters and with gunfire and tear gas, 
with both the riots and the police and the army present on the streets, the government closed schools, the bus stations, and the curfew is in place right now, like from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. What they are, are trying to do, they are trying to route the violence and uh, businesses are still closed. So despite of this protest and looting continuing in Swaziland really, and with internet access being a big, uh, being limited to people, I believe that this is a call of a democratic change in Swaziland. And if you know very well, Swaziland is the last absolute monarchy in Southern Africa and the king has been ruling for, over, for, for 35 years now. I believe that everyone has their right to security, justice and democracy, and also women's rights all over the world. When you look at the fact that the people that people who try to discriminate and put women on the other side when it comes to democracy, they forget about Article 21. The emphasis laid in this article is that everyone has the right to take part in government, to have access to public resources and the right to vote. Nelson Mandela once said that to deny people their human rights is to challenge their very own humanity. And trust me, this message did something within me. So good people, I believe that this is a wake up call. This is a wake up call to go out there and be the change, be the voice, be the advocate on, on human rights really. But when that alarm clock goes off, please, please, please don't ever hit the snooze button. Don't be like, I'll wake up in the next two minutes. I'll wake up in the next four minutes. You know what? Forever is a long time. Why don't you wake up, get going, go out there, be an advocate for human rights. You really don't have to be politically involved to share knowledge about human rights. So go out there, be the change in this world. Uh, you know, it's so funny. When I was, um, when I was uh, in the eighth grade, when I was in the eighth grade, I, I was nicknamed Phoenix. I was nicknamed Phoenix after writing a composition using the idiomatic expression that says, I rose from the ashes like a Phoenix bird meaning I became successful again. And it's so funny because this English teacher, she didn't know that the nickname Phoenix, it resonates with me. And it also aligns with my destiny because for those of you who doesn't know the Phoenix bird, the Phoenix bird is a Greek, uh, it's a Greek mythological bird believed to rise from its own ashes after being buried like hundreds of years ago. This immortal creature acquires new life by arising from the ashes of its own ancestor which represents our capacity for vision and success. So I want to encourage you, if you're watching and listening under my voice right now, when your world comes crashing down, weigh your scars and show how your phoenix feels like to die from inside. And trust in your own capability to rise from your own ashes. Since the phoenix bird has to burn, die, experience pain before resurrection from its own ashes. So please, please write this down, write this down. Resilience to greatness resilience to greatness. If I can be honest with you, I don't know what goals you've set for the next six months. I don't know what dreams you have for your future, but here's one thing I know about you. You are destined for greatness. Inside of you, God has put seeds of excellence. Those seeds are supposed to grow and flourish, but many people have become crippled by their past, past en encounters. And some have stepped over other people to get to the top. But I believe that God has a better plan for every one of us. Your objective is what you were designed for and the reason why you live today. With God, I believe that we are all destined for greatness as long as we follow his strategy. This is when the growth commences because discovering your gift and following God's idea will make you understand that you have everything around you to reach to your full potential. My everyday inspiration, Mr. Les Brown, he once said, if you had to die today, at this very moment, at this hour, what dreams, what ideas, what visions, what goals, what talents, what skills, and what books will die with you? And he also continued that the richest place on this planet is the cemetery, because that's where all the dreams, all the visions, all the goals, all the talents, all the skills have been buried. Honestly, I don't know about you, but with me listening to this message, it gave me sleepless nights and I started journaling. I am proud today to introduce my first book, Rise to Greater Heights, which is a comprehensive guide to turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. And I didn't stop, I didn't stop because, you know, if you have a purpose in life, 
you'll have to follow along that line. So I didn't stop. I wrote um, with George Floyd's whole situation and the Black Lives Matter, I decided to go ahead and write human rights. Human rights, these are all God-given fundamental rights and freedoms that we should be enjoying in this world. So I believe with uh, knowing your human rights, this world can be a better place to stay. And I didn't stop. I didn't stop good people. Throughout the whole world, we came up together, 15 authors from different countries in six and five continents, Australia, the United Kingdom, USA, the Caribbean, South America, Canada. We came together with resilience to greatness. This book has the potential to completely revolutionize every aspect of your life and career. You know, I also have a free transformation guide for you that will turn your fears into greater success. It's available on my website, risetogreaterheights.com, www.risetogreaterheights.com. Because growing up, I didn't have much because my father is to have an early departure from this planet Earth, but I had everything because of my mama's love. And I love you so much, mom. So I think whosoever said that the sky is the limit was wrong. From today on, I, Nompumelelo, Riel, Kunene, believe that the sky is our point of view. So let's all rise to greater heights. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much, our amazing speakers. Oh, uh, Dr. Onika was kicked out, so I, I believe she's coming back. Thank you so much for taking your time, really, and sharing some nuggets. So at this point, I'm just going to leave this platform to you, for you to share your final thoughts, to, for you to share with our viewers um, on more and more nuggets on human rights. So it can be really any speaker can just jump in, share your final thoughts, and then I'm going to go and check if we have any questions. And uh, yeah, so any speaker really can just jump in and share your final thoughts. Thank you. Oh, uh, well, uh, for me, I think my final thought is going to be from uh, John Griffin's quote, which, uh, which talks about uh, racism. And I quote, racism is not something that is natural within the black or white people. It is taught to the people, I mean, it is taught to the people by the society. But who are the people we're talking about? Still you and I, like uh, Mr. Stephen Underwood uh, says that charity begins at home. I still wanna believe, I mean, I still wanna strongly believe in that, that all these things, the morals, the ethics, as to like start from our various homes, you know, educating, our children, students, you know, about having some form of dignity, respect, you know, for people so that they can actually have this sense of belonging. And uh, people becomes from my, uh, uh, from, there is a school of thought which says that people becomes proactive when they are being treated fairly and indignity. So that's going to be my final conclusion for today. Stay blessed. Yes, uh, my final thoughts uh, concerning uh, the human rights uh, would be that uh, we as human beings, uh, again, uh, piggybacking off of what uh, Mr. Yinka said, uh, we have to get back to the fundamental fundamental things of of uh you know as i was growing up you know it takes it takes a village to raise you know to raise a family and it takes a village to raise a society and a culture and uh, you know we have to get back to we, we have to get to uh, again and as you have so uh, eloquently stated uh real we have to get back to a place to where we're willing to be challenged to unlearn some of the things of what Mr. Yinka said that society has.
forced us to learn instead of us discover, you know, education, you know, I grew up, education is about, you know, self-discovery. It's about self-exploration. We have, we have robbed people of this, you know, uh, and I, I love technology. Thank God for technology. But uh, there's nothing like researching, you know, just like I found about human rights. I researched it. I searched it out. You know, I, I, I asked God, and as uh, Dr. Shirley said, you know, uh, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And then all, not some, not a little, all these things shall be added unto you. And I believe that when we, you know, when we start searching in the right place, and, 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 and again, I believe this pandemic has taught all of us, you know, we must come, we must come to an end of ourselves because if we don't, we will, we will self-destruct within ourselves. We, we have to come to a place uh, within this time and in this uh, unique uh, new era of human history where we're willing to, uh, as the Bible says, we're willing to put the needs of others first before ourselves. You know, when Jesus' disciples, Peter and John, were uh, arguing about, you know, who's going to be the greatest in his kingdom, he said, he who is willing to serve many, not the few, not the less. And this is one thing that uh, for myself that is uh, disturbing about this uh, cultural uh, woke and, and uh, seeker sensitive society is that we're willing to we're willing to become, quote unquote, great. And we're willing to, uh, oh, I want to become, you know, this and that at the expense. Of totally, of totally derogatizing and de, de, uh, dehumanizing somebody else in order for me to become great. And again, in order for us to become great as, as human beings. And uh, I'm a wordsmith like my father. And uh, I'm here, you know, uh, doing this. And uh, I, I'm dealing with the unfortunate event of having my, uh, my father pass away on August 13th just this uh, past few couple of weeks and I was going to contact you and say like, you know, no, I, you know, I want to, you know, uh, but something in me, something in me deeply said, Stephen, this is your human right or this is your human uh, 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 responsibility to keep this appointment because I felt destiny calling me. I heard destiny stand at the door of my heart and say, if you open up, I'll come in. And you find that in Revelation chapter three, where Jesus said, I stand, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Many of times we miss our opportunity for being great, Miss Real. It's because we don't hear the door knocking and we refuse to open. Not so much because of who's standing at the door knocking, but we're afraid, as my mother used to tell me growing up, Stephen, you're afraid of your own intelligence, of your own success because of the call that is on your life. And so I wanna leave people with this last, uh, this last thought. Don't be afraid of your own greatness because you'll never know where the, where the intelligence of your own greatness will lead you. But in order to get there, you must be willing to unlearn, relearn and learn something new about yourself and about something that you have never discovered in your life in order to become great. So I thank you for this time. I thank you, um, uh, Ms. Rial and uh, uh, Mr. Yinka and also Dr. Shirley. It was a pleasure and it was my honor to be here with you all. Thank you so much. Amen. Um, God bless you, Brother Stevens, praying for you and your family and for your strength. Thank you for being here, sharing what you have shared. My final thoughts for today, I want to leave a quote from Miles Monroe in this, let every opposition strengthen you rather than stop you. Let every opposition strengthen you rather than stop you. I want to leave with the listening audience, even though I had some technical challenges, but I'm here. But I wanna leave with the listening audience that take what you've heard and use it. It's not about what we hear and what we know, but it's what we do. And I know this is just, basic, fundamental, foundational, but you build from it. 
You seek to want to know more. As the word said, you ask, you seek, and you knock. You ask questions, you get answers. You knock on doors, they will be open. And you look, you will surely find. So we have to ask, we have to seek, we have to knock, we have to use. We don't want to just know, but we got to take action. We must take action. We must take action. We must take actions with the things that we've learned, with the things that we know, and the things that we continue to seek because of who we are and what it is that we are wanting to do. Don't settle for where we are and what we have because there's more. There's more because there's greatness into us. There's greatness and there's, and there, there's greatness. There's, there are higher heights for us to rise to and there are deeper depths. And don't stay on the mountaintop too long because nothing grows on the mountain because we take root in the valley. So I wanna leave with you as, as, as we have talked about our human rights, take what you have heard and start to build on that mm -hmm. foundation. God bless you. Ooh, wow, you know, <laughs> this has turned out to be a sermon. I'm like, preach on pastor, preach on. <laughs> wow, from Yinka to Stephen, to you, Dr. Shelley, really, really. This is the greatness I've been talking about. So I believe that our audience have been really inspired, motivated, and ready to rise to greater heights. I forgot to ask, how will our audience try to reach out to you if they just want to be in touch with you on your services, the products, whatsoever you're offering? How can they get hold of you? I'll start with you, Yinka, and uh, Stephen, and uh, Dr. Shirley. Just share with the audience how they can be in touch with you. Uh, I can be reached via uh, Instagram at Temitope uh, Inca uh, on Facebook Inca Temitope Olasoji. That's all. Mr. Underwood. Oh, yes. Um, you can get a hold of me through several channels. You can get a hold of me through Facebook and uh, it's facebook.com backslash or forward slash Stephen Underwood 47 uh, through Facebook. You can get me through Instagram at, at the at symbol. You can, U-C-A-N, save eight. And you can get a hold of me that way. You can also get a hold of me through LinkedIn, linkedin.com forward slash I-N forward slash Stephen Underwood through LinkedIn. Or you can contact me and we can have a 30 minute free uh, discovery strategy session. And my calendar is HTTP at or Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com forward slash land a gig, L-A-N-D and then A-G-I-G. -G. And those are the ways to get a hold of me. And I'll be very glad to connect with those uh, that have attended the uh, presentation today. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Riel. Thank you. Thank you, I'm Mr. Underwood. Uh, Dr. Shelley, how can they get hold of you? Um, I'm on social media, Facebook as Onika Shirley, and I am on Instagram as Action Speaks Volume. Action Speaks Volume and Facebook, Onika Shirley. You can also send an email to Action Speaks Volume at gmail.com. One word, Action Speaks Volume at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you so much. So luckily we don't have any questions, but I believe that our viewers have been motivated, inspired, and ready to rise to greater heights. So thank you so much for joining us today at Rise to Greater Heights Network, where you can turn your fears into greater success while seizing new opportunities. So do join us next week at the same time, same place. Thank you. Merci. See you now. On Johnny. Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one I say. Let him leave me traps and men to pray to Jehovah me, I pray. Let him laugh, let him weep, let him yell, let him sing. Only one I say. 
that have made me traps and man's who prays Jehovah me I pray let I be me instead of playing games for chasing fame let somebody spread the lack of flames no living my life to the fullest and shout out my halala to the fullest let my lungs out I'm still rising up to pray